Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I've spoken to you guys about uh, just recently a young man that someone brought to my attention, Dave Jose, Dave Jose. I said David Jose in the video. I don't think that will offend him. But Dave Jose, he is trying to talk to you guys with a lot more succinctness than I do because I'm too much into using the legalese terms as I've been doing this for too long. However, Dave, he's on Rumble. Rumble, Rumble, Rumble. Let me see if I can pull it up for you guys real quick. One second. Move out of the way. One second. His website on Rumble. Are you M B L E Rumble.com? Rumble, Rumble, Rumble.com. Dot com. And what rumble 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 you have to type in dave cares for y-o-u dave cares for you this one right here this him this one right here top one dave cares for you that's him okay that's him go that's him go and this video is where he's talking about the case i'm about to show you all right go ahead and listen to dave dave uh, I listened to a couple of his shorter videos, and there was one talking about, give me a second, volume number four. This one right here. This one right here, I, I like that one. This one right here was, I, you know what I mean? So go ahead and listen to that one. All right, let's get back. Supreme Court. These are the oral arguments that Dave is talking about in there. This one has transcripts. This is YouTube. I decided I wanted to look up the SEC versus Jarsky. Now, here is Gurich, and that's the, 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 the fellow, follow, philo, philo, fivefold, thumb, 22, 859, the Securities and Exchange Commission, Commission, Commission versus, versus Jarkusi. Jarkusi. Mr. Fletcher? Mr. Fletcher? Thank you, Mr. Thank Chief you, Mr. Justice, Justice, and may it please, please, please the court. Hold on. May it please the court. Why do they say that? May it please the court. Why 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 does it have to please the mother court for you to exercise a right? Sorry, I apologize for that. Enforcing federal statutes, statute, conduct adjudication, adjudication, find facts, find facts and impose civil penalties, civil penalties and other consequences, and other consequences prescribed, by prescribed by law. More than a More century ago, the court described the validity, the validity of those two statutes, statutes settled, settled beyond, beyond, beyond any possible constitutional, constitutional question. question. And since the and enactment, since the enactment of, the of the EPA, those and those other administrative, administrative adjudications, adjudications have often have been conducted, been conducted by, officers, by officers, especially appointed for this purpose, and removable on this cause. This court this should court reject, should reject all, three all three of the circuit's reasons, reasons for upsetting, for upsetting that long-standing and entrenched practice. First, First this court's this decision, court's decision now is considering 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 many of the same arguments presented today, presented today and reaffirmed that Congress, Congress does, not does not violate the Seventh Amendment, Amendment when it authorizes, authorizes an agency to impose civil penalties, penalties to administrative, administrative proceedings to enforce a federal statute. Respondents have not, have not asked court to, to, court to overrule Alice, the long, long line of precedent on which it rested, and they also, and they also haven't identified any relevant distinction between that case and this one. Second, Second, Congress does, Congress not, does violate not violate the non-delegation doctrine when it gives an agency the choice of pursuing administrative or judicial proceedings. The decision whether and how, how to pursue enforcement, enforcement action is a quintessentially executive power, and Congress, and Congress doesn't, doesn't violate the Constitution when it leaves that decision to executive discretion as traditionally done. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all see the stupidity of what he just said? So the decision as to whether or how to enforce or pursue enforcement of action is a quintessential one left to the executive branch. And Congress does not violate the Constitution when it leaves that decision to the executive branch. Ladies and gentlemen, no, it isn't. It is a secured right thing. An action, a person is required to receive due process. And any action where a person is accused of a crime, doesn't matter what type of crime it is, whether it's an administrative crime, a commercial crime, doesn't matter what type of crime it is, they have the right to a trial by jury. And if there is a controversy, any type of controversy, any and all controversy, the person has a right, if the value is greater than $20, to a trial by jury. 
Haven't we not been saying that? Let's see. Finally, Finally the, the APA limited, limited, limited removal protection for ALJ is entirely consistent. This is Administrative Procedures Act. This is so-called administrative law judges, so that you guys understand what those so-called acronyms mean. Consistent with this, with this court's decision in free enterprise fund. There, the there court, the court confronted, confronted that unprecedented agency, a powerful, a powerful law enforcement board that was insulated from, from removal because, because of an unusually stringent, stringent, stringent provision, provision that was not that was subject, not subject to the FTC's control. control. Here, in Here contrast, contrast, ALJs, ALJs are purely adjudicative officers who are subject to commission, plenary, plenary control and review of their decisions, and the APA's, and the APA's modest four-cause removal standard gives the commission ample authority to remove, to remove those ALJs, ALJs if they fail, if they to, fail to accept supervision. supervision. I, welcome I welcome the court's question. But you do but you agree, Mr. Lester, that it depends on the right of right involved. We do. We do. We take this court's this court statement, of statement of the public of rights doctrine from out of proofing and other cases, and the, the argument one is here is limited to the particular strand of the public rights doctrine that the court has described in that with other cases. And how would you define public rights? So I acknowledge, I think the court has acknowledged most recently in oil states that the public rights concept is tested, the court has never fully plumbed its outer perimeters. I think what I'd say is the strand of the doctrine that's relevant here is the same one from Atlas, which is when the federal government an agency is enforcing a federal statute and there's an exercise of sovereign powers, that's a matter involving public rights. I don't agree with that. We're talking about public rights here. Private rights are involved. Would you then think that it is required to be adjudicated for an Article III court? So we haven't made an argument. There are some circumstances, cases like Shore and Thomas, where the court has said in some circumstances it may be permissible to assign an interadjudication involving private rights to non-Article III tribunals. We're not making an argument like that here. We're resting on the argument that this is a class of public rights case within this court's precedent, and also we think properly viewed as a matter of first principles. Mr. Fletcher, could you go directly to Justice Thomas' question? He's already written on this issue, and he thinks that a private right is any right that is... Hold on now. Did you hear what she just said? She said, not here. You're going to answer the question because you didn't answer the question. You went so far away from answering his direct question that I want you to answer his question. Y'all heard what she said, right? Hold on. Hold on. Mr. Fletcher, could you go directly to Justice Thomas' question? He already written on this issue, and he thinks that a private right is any right that involves property, life, or liberty. Basically, these are private rights. They have no jurisdiction over your private rights. None. Hold on. Well, liberty, basically. Could you address that part of the Justice's state of the issue? I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Justice Thomas, you have addressed it. That link to Maxon and other writings. We think that the court case is going back all the way to Murray's list and for the proposition that it would be a matter of public rights within the purposes of Article III, even if private property was involved. Murray's list, after all, was taking someone's property in order to satisfy it. The government, same thing in Sandman, same thing in Atlas Roofing. We think it makes it a matter of public rights and means that it does not offend the separation of powers to assign or to enforcement an initial adjudication to executive branch officials. It's that it's a classic exercise of executive power to enforce federal law by applying the law to the facts in a particular case and by imposing the consequences that are specified by law. Can I ask you just a couple of examples and see where it falls under your definition? The federal government association with the state built the interstate highway system. Enormous benefit to members of the public. Could the government decide that accidents interfere with what they were trying to accomplish in the highway system and create an agency to hear and adjudicate who's liable, responsible, and how much for accidents on the highway system? No court, no jury. No, Mr. Chief Justice, not under the standard case that we're relying on here. I take the hypothetical to be could Congress write it? Hold on, y'all. I knew the answer was going to be no by the attorney, but the answer is absolutely yes. Okay. Pay attention to what Robert says. Could. 
could I ask you just a couple of examples and see if it falls under your definition, not the law's definition, not our definition, but your definition. The federal government, in association with the United uh, with the states, built an interstate highway system, an enormous benefit to members of the public. Could the government decide that accidents interfere with what they were trying to accomplish in the highway system and create an agency that should hear and adjudicate who is liable, responsible, and how much the accidents on the highway, uh, much for the accidents on the highway system? No court, no jury? Now, he says no, Chief Justice, not under the strand of cases that we're relying on. But wait a minute. Isn't that what you've been saying, you moron, that that's what they could do? They get to make whatever decision they want? Hold on, that that would be be liability between individuals, the party involved in a problem. Only on a system where they gave the benefit, which those people that have the accident are taking advantage of. I understood that to be part of the aspect of the public rights doctrine. I think there are strands of the court's public rights cases that talk about government benefits. I think usually the sense in which that's relevant to the only sense that would be relevant to the argument we're making here is when it's the government itself. It's public rights that matter between the government Public. Sometimes that's sometimes that's so, so what about, so what about uh, uh, health care? Government, government involved in the health care uh, sector, uh, sector and, and could, uh, could an agency, an agency uh, determine that, that, that uh, the cost, uh, the cost of, medical of medical malpractice, malpractice claims, claims uh, throughout, throughout health care, not just the not particular, just particular aspect, aspect which, the which the government participating in, in interferes with what they're trying to accomplish in the health care system. system. And so the subject of medical malpractice would be handled by a government agency, expert agency, to reduce, to reduce the cost, the cost of the benefit, of the benefit of healthcare, of healthcare that the government, that the government uh, provides. provides. No court, no, no, court, no jury. Now, hold on now. I don't know who Roberts is, ladies and gentlemen. I never met Mr. Roberts. I've never really even heard Roberts actually speak. Maybe once or twice, but never have I listened to this much of him speaking. I will tell you this for a fact. I do like this so-called Roberts court. I don't agree with how he came into office. I don't agree with how they got rid of William Rehnquist to bring him into office. I don't agree with the way they got rid of, uh, you know, Mrs. Um, dang it, why can't I think of that justice that everybody knew, the short one, to get to put her in place, or the Rehnquist, uh, Scalia, so who came in for Scalia? Was it Kavanaugh, and then, or was it Gertz, Wh- whichever one? And then Miss Jackson comes in. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's what. That's what. That's what her. She came in, and she comes in for Scalia. Okay. I don't agree with how they came in the office. Okay. Ruth Bader Ginsburg saying she wasn't going nowhere. She was going to stay on the bench, you know, because she was healthy. Just had a clean bill of health from her doctors. Next thing you know, she did. And then Scalia, man, apparently <laughs> he, he, my pillow uh, and him came together and decided he wanted to stay asleep. So anyway, I like Roberts. I like the direction of the court because they're dealing with the law. Now, Mr. Dave, Dave Jose has said that Part of the conversation being had here by the justices, especially on the Seventh Amendment, right to a trial by jury. That's why you keep hearing the mention, no trial, no jury. He's not the only one to say it. They said it up there, no trial, no jury. They keep saying, no trial, no jury. Remember, they're focusing on the trial and jury part because Dave Jose wrote them and said, hey, and he has an affidavit that he wrote. Hold on, let me minimize this. Let's show y'all the affidavit. This is the affidavit right here. This is the affidavit. You can download it. It's online. I'm going to give you the case. Then y'all going to have to watch this video, and y'all going to find this online. So he has an affidavit that he sent them. Goes to all public agencies. He sent it to them. I am now redoing the affidavit to suit my understanding of things. I, I, not a lot of corrections, just corrections, okay? Okay? All right. And so because of that, there are some things that I have to take care of. Now, he, they highlight the conversations of the justices. 
Okay, now remember, this is not a decision. This is just them having a conversation on the law. Now, we're not going to sit here all day and watch the whole case because I'm going to go listen to the rest of the case. So y'all are not going to sit up here and do that to me. I just wanted to show you that the case is online. So I'm going to put the link for this YouTube. It is oral arguments, colon, SEC versus Jock. <laughs> okay. Jock. <laughs> anyway, and when you listen, I want you to listen to the argument. See, this is oral argument. The SEC will lose this case. Now, they, they, if they win it, it will be on a technicality, okay? But the conversation, what they're doing, pay attention, the conversation is on the money. Now, look, I got to go. Just wanted to share that with y'all. I got work to do. I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves.